So we substitute dx dy dx dy into our delta x formula. Okay, which is this thing. So we substitute it into here. Then don't forget to multiply this by delta y, this delta y from here. Okay. So what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sell this. See, we what we found here is the expression for delta x. The, so the expression for delta x is this something, this giant thing multiplied by delta y. So we're gonna substitute this whole thing into the PVD formula. Okay, the PVD formula. So let, let us do that. So um, let, let me just sorry. So the PVD formula, remember, is this. And then we found that this is like this. So we've already found an expression for delta x, which is this one here, the yellow highlighted one. So let us substitute this whole thing into here. So if we do that, we shall get, okay, so I substituted, I shall get this. W, D, Y, okay, oops, I forgot the infinitesimal. So don't forget your D, Y here, okay? So the next step, right, you see, step four says to drop the infinitesimal, see, drop the infinitesimal. So let's go back down here. Notice that all the terms now contain delta Y, you see? This term contains delta y. This term contains delta y. So what we can do is we drop it throughout each term of this equation. So we can drop this and drop this. OK, what else am I going to do? I'm going to factorize out this negative y from this bracket here. So if we do that, we shall get negative y on the outside. And then this whole thing here. Okay, and then I'm going to move W to this side, getting negative W. Then I'm going to cancel the negatives. And then I'm going to simplify this inside here. So how to simplify this? Just cross multiply. Obtaining this. Okay, I'm going to move Y to that side. And then I just bring this giant fraction over. So if I bring it over, I shall invert it. So I get this. So let me make sure the answer is correct. Yes, okay, the answer is correct. Okay, so I, I know this this looks tragically algebraic, right? It's like so much algebra that you have to do, but bear with me. It really boils down to the five steps that I've outlined here. So let us summarize what, what we have been doing all along. So first, assign the displacement coordinates. So that means the X and the Y, right? And the delta X and the delta Y. So that's what you do on your diagram. Then write out the delta W, which is the sum of forces equated to zero. Then express all the coordinates. So you find you use the geometry, trigonometry, Pythagoras theorem, whatever, and then try to relate the variables together. So here we have X and Y, right? You try to form, get a formula that relates X to Y, okay? Express X in terms of Y. Then after that, you use the small approximate change. 
So let me recap. I feel like I didn't explain this clearly the first time I said it. So let me recap. What is this? So you see, when we start with this, then we write out this. What are we trying to do in step three using this? We are trying to get rid of the infinitesimal because in, think about it, in reality, there is no infinitesimal. It doesn't actually exist. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to remove delta x and delta y. This is what we're trying to do here. So how do we remove it? Using this, right, you will get, okay, using this, remember earlier we got something, it doesn't matter what that thing is, multiplied by delta y plus this delta y. See, now both of them have delta y, we can remove it by just dropping it. So this is gone, this is gone. Then after that, you can make f the subject, which is step five, okay? So you make f the subject, f is something, 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 w. So this is what we're doing from a bird's eye view. Just take these five steps. I know when you actually execute it out, it's really difficult. There's a lot of algebra, geometry, a lot of thinking, but bear with me. As we do more questions, it really boils down to these five steps and you'll know that it's actually pretty easy. So to prove my point, let us move on to question two. So here, our job is to find F to keep this structure in place. So let us go ahead and do that. So first, first step is we assign the coordinates and they've assigned it for us, which is this H and this X here. So H and X, these are the coordinates and then they're infinitesimals, delta H, delta X. So first we have delta W, right? Because it's zero. Then after that, okay, we know H and F are opposing each other. So negative like that. And then MG and X are together with each other in the same direction. So positive, like that. Now, we have to relate all of these coordinates to a common variable. Here, what is the common variable they assign to us? The common variable is actually theta. Okay, let us see how we can exploit theta to drop the infinitesimal. So, our, our mission here is to make h related to theta and make x related to theta. Okay, now we have to do this using the geometry of the structure. So first, let us take a look. Let us focus on this triangle here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I draw a horizontal line through here, and then I'm focusing on this tiny triangle here. So when you, fo when you focus on this tiny triangle, you notice that this is theta, and then since this is half of h, so this is h over two, right? I split this h into half, and then this is a. So which trigonometry formula can we relate h to theta? We can use cosine, because this is adjacent, hypotenuse. So we can say that cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is a, okay? so. If we simplify this, we shall get, um, you multiply this over, is equal to h over two, and then you make h the subject. So you get h is equal to two a cosine theta, okay? So let's keep this formula in mind, later we'll use it. And now let's express x in terms of theta. So you relate x to theta, how can we do that? So let us take a look at Okay, notice that they say ABD, the length of ABD is L. This whole length here is L. So what shall we do? We shall focus on this triangle here. If we focus on that triangle, notice that this is X, this is L, and Okay, instead of focusing on this triangle, actually we can use that triangle, but I think it's more obvious to use this triangle instead. This is x, sorry, 
this is x, this is l, and then this is theta, right? Let me show you. This x is this here. This l is what they told us, and then this theta is the angle. So what formula we can use here? We can also still use cosine. So cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. If you make x the subject, you get L cosine theta. OK? Now, we're going to use the small approximate change formula to get the infinitesimals of x and h. Essentially, we, we want to find delta h and delta x. So. Let us do it for delta h first. Using the formula, we can say delta. We can say delta h is equal to dh d theta delta theta, right? Look, these two can cancel to give me the my dh. Then see this. This term says that we need to differentiate h with respect to theta. Our h we obtained here, we need to differentiate this with respect to theta. So let us differentiate this. So if you get this, you should get. Okay. So if you differentiate this, these two are constants, so we'll just leave them be. We, get, we shall get. Okay. The differentiation of cosine is negative sine. So negative 2a sine theta. Now we put this into here. We shall get this. Okay, we're going to substitute this into the PVD later. Now going back to here, we need to do the same for delta x. So this given by this. See, notice that this two and this two can cancel to give me my delta x. So we need to differentiate x with respect to theta. Where do we get this? From here, oh, well, what we obtained earlier. So this is d d theta l cosine theta multiplied by the infinitesimal. So again, differentiation of cosine is just negative sine. So this is our delta x. So now we found delta x and we found delta h. So we're going to substitute this delta h and delta x into our PVD formula here and here. If you do that, you will get negative f times this was what? Negative 2a sine d theta. Minus negative 2a sine delta, delta theta plus mg times negative L sine theta delta theta. Okay, so now let's scan through this equation to see if we can simplify anything. So again, drop the infinitesimal. Then both of them have sine theta, so we can drop them too. What else? This negative can cancel. So this leaves behind 2af. Then this leaves behind. This gives me minus mgl equals to zero. If I make f the subject, I shall get. Yeah, this is the formula. <coughs> so you see, let me recap what we're doing. We start from PVD, we write out the PVD. Then we relate the infinitesimals dh to. See, we, we want to find what's dh, we want to find what's dx. dh and dx. So we relate them to a common variable. In this case, the common variable is theta. 
So we relate this to, so what that means is we write this as something, 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 delta theta. Then this too, something, 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 delta theta. And how do we do this? We use the small approximate change formula. See, after we do that, we get something, 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 multiplied by delta theta, and something, 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 multiplied by delta theta, so that we can get rid of the delta theta after that. So we get rid of them, we simplify, then we can make F the subject. So that is what PVD is about. Okay, if you found this video helpful, please support me on coffee. I really help your, I really appreciate your help in helping the channel grow. Thank you.